guys, it has been forever since I posted a video last, and this is something that I'd like to start being more consistent with. The overall direction of this channel will be creative with a twist. So, for those of you who know me for my work outside of the art space, like in the paranormal, history, genealogy, or travel, <laughs> Hang tight. I'll be posting a video that'll explain the direction of this channel very soon. As for today, one thing I have always enjoyed is watching other artists' studio tours. Some are busy working from their kitchen tables, which is where we all started. Some have managed to take over a corner of a room, which is where I'm at. Some have taken over an entire room in their house, others their entire basement. Some have taken over a shed and converted it into a makeshift studio space. And there are others lucky enough to be working in a professional studio. While our spaces may vary and they are fun to check out at any stage, I think we can all agree that great art can be created anywhere. But having a dedicated space to store all the crap we collect along the way does make creating a little easier. So I would like to show you my little corner of the world before we jump into some fun projects. With that said, let's jump right into it with the storage cabinet behind me that's just under the markers. In this first drawer, we have all of my drawing and inking tools. We have this, which is a great set of drawing tools. We've got protractors and rulers and compasses, sharpeners and eraser. It's just a handy little set. Then we have the standard shading stumps and we have some erasers. Then we have a smaller box of inks, and these are all pretty much black with some metallics thrown in. So pretty straightforward stuff. Where's the metallics? There we are. We got gold, white, silver, and a copper. Then we have this, which I put all of my inking pens in. I've got a couple eyedroppers in there for working with ink. And I also have some pieces of vine charcoal. That stuff is excellent for shading and it's very breakable. That's why I have it in there. In the back, we have another thing of black ink. We've got one in white. And then we have these Liquitex acrylic inks. I think I've got 20 of these things hiding in here. Okay, and then we have this leather pencil roll. It's actually pretty handy. Okay. Now the second drawer is basically all water related supplies. I have quite a few of these aqua inks. It started with an art subscription box. I got a couple of them. And then the obsessive part of me decided I needed more of them even though I haven't been using them. So we're gonna have to put these stinkers to use. I've got blues, I've got reds, I've got yellows, I've got greens. There are no shortage of colors. Then we have our watercolor compartment. And there is a lot of Winsor Newton in this. There are some other brands too, but a lot of the other brands came from art subscription boxes as well. So they kind of got randomly thrown in there. In the back, we have our gouache. Again, more Winsor Newton. Got a bunch of different colors in here. And again, I have not used these. It is absolutely insane. I don't know if I'm an artist or I'm just a hoarder. You be the judge. So the next thing I have are water-soluble graphite pencils. You can draw with them like a normal pencil, but then you can use some water to kind of drag out the color or smooth it out. I thought that was kind of a cool idea. I hadn't worked with anything like it before. As you can see, I still haven't worked with anything like it before. So we're gonna have to find a way to make use of these suckers too. From there, we have some pearlescent colors. We have a whole row of gold. And again, you can see they are unused. I have a problem, I admit it. Please say I'm not alone with this problem. I swear, if you're an artist, I don't know if you're more of an art person or if you're more of a supply hoarder, but it seems to be one and the same. It's like you have to have one of everything. But anyways, these are some more like metallic pearlescent kind of colors. And then I have my set of Winsor Newton. And these colors aren't in those tubes. I got the tubes to fill out the set because of course I need the set if I'm not using it all, right? I actually did use this set a little. And then we have, this is from another art box subscription set just little dabs of color so you can try the watercolor out. As you can see, those are untouched too. There's a theme here. <laughs> Then these I ordered out of a small company out of Mexico. There's a lot of really fun, crazy colors in here. So I grabbed them because I hadn't used all my other stuff yet. So I needed more. And this is some more metallics, but they're kind of dulled down. This one especially makes me think of like rust or something. And then I think this is the last thing in here, as you can see, <laughs> another thing that hasn't been used. This is a tinted charcoal paint pan set. It's just a little six piece set. So that 
is drawer number two. This third drawer is all my sculpting and clay related tools. This is something I really want to try and get into sooner rather than later. I got these on Amazon and every time I see this set, it makes me think of the show Dexter. I got this out of the Inktober box one of the years, but I've got more clay tools on that side and more on the other. It's really quite ridiculous how much I have that I haven't been using. A nice little roller to roll out our clay. I do have a pasta maker too, but obviously doesn't fit in here. We have some oven baked clay adhesive. We have some armature wire to play with. Figured these would make some good wood bases. This was for a past project I think that I was going to do with a cake. We have some more explorer tools and clay cutting tools. See what I mean? I'm ridiculous. I think that's it in there. I have a decent amount of things to get started. All right, drawer four. This one looks a little empty compared to the other ones, really, but it's pretty much everything for oil painting. We got some linseed oil. We got two bottles of that because I bought it once, forgot I had some, and bought some more. We have a bunch of oil paints. Some of them are crazy old, so it'll be interesting to see how many of them are any good. They're kind of a mix of brands as well in here, too. And then I have another little compartment for all of my painting knives. And last but not least for the drawers, we have all of my acrylic paints. Well, all of my Liquitex heavy body paints for the most part. I do have some goldens in here too. There are a few of these that I did actually use, but some of these tubes, as you can see, are brand new, like most of the stuff that I have. One of the things that I've never liked about acrylic paints is how fast they dry. So I do have things to add to them to slow down the drying. And I think one of the things I learned in my class that I found most surprising was being able to spray your canvas with water to thin down the paints and to keep them wet for a little longer. That is what I've got for my acrylic. Now that we're done with the drawers, let's have a look inside the cabinet. In the side of the cabinet, it's a little bit of a hot mess. It's stuff that I don't know what to do with. It's too big for marker storage. It's too big for the drawers. It's kind of a bunch of random things thrown together. So let's have a look shelf by shelf. On the top shelf, we have a mesh bag that I got years ago from Victoria's Secret. I love it because you can see what's inside of it without having to rummage through it. I used to use it to carry around my multi-liners, but now it holds a bunch of random pens that don't have a home. Highlighters, gel pens, sharpies, that sort of thing. Nothing wrong with any of the supplies, I just don't use them often, but I also don't want to throw them out. These little jars I like to use for inking. They're great for cleaning smaller brushes or pens. And these larger jars, same idea. I do have two of these, not sure where the other one is at the moment, but I use them when playing around with watercolor. Then we have a random empty pouch and plastic lining to protect my workspace. I used to use a lot of this when I was doing acrylic pours. Then I have several paint palettes. I love this ceramic one. We have some basic plastic ones in the back. Then we have a Masterson Stay Wet palette. I love this thing. They're great for oil paint or acrylic. It definitely helps keep your paint from drying out. Now for more art supplies. <laughs> I have two sets of Rembrandt soft pastels. Why? Because one was a landscape and the other was a portrait set. Did I need them both? No. There were actually quite a few colors that were in both sets, but I mean, there were also colors that weren't in both sets. And that would be me making excuses for my continued hoarding. Then we have another smaller set in the back that's made up of full and half sticks. Please don't commit me. When I bought these, I was living between New Hampshire and Australia. The two bigger sets were in Australia and I was home on a visit, so I bought the smaller set to play around with while I was here. I swear there is a method to my madness sometimes. Last but not least, for the top shelf, gray tone soft pastels. When I was in high school, I worked with the gray tone set of pastels and loved it. So when I came across these, I decided I needed them. Did I need them? Probably not, but here we are. Now let's jump to the bottom shelf. This bottom shelf is a bit more random than the top shelf. First up, we have a couple of funnels that came in handy with my acrylic pores. Then I have a jar of Mod Podge that's come in handy for several different crafting projects. We have a measuring cup full of mini sticky notes in different colors and some glue. There's also a can of fixative. This is used on pastel pieces to kind of lock down or seal your finished work. Then I have some gesso that I use a lot to prep my wood panels before painting. Some odorless mineral spirits to clean out my brushes. Then there's a jug of Floetrol. This is what I added to my paints as a pouring medium for my paint pours. I always got the best cells of color using this. 
Now this bucket full of little screw-on furniture feet and coupling nuts. I used these to level my wood panels while I was paint pouring. They acted as a stand, but it also gave me the ability to lower or raise specific corners to help level the painting during the drying process. Next is an 8-pound box of Sculpey Original Oven Baked Clay. This should keep me busy once I actually get started. <laughs> Then we have another palette, as if I needed another one. I like that it's sealed up pretty well, but it also has a lot of little wells to separate and mix color in. Last but not least is a little light table that I grabbed off Amazon, and that is everything that I have in the cabinet. Now for my marker and pencil storage. I got this storage unit on Amazon. It's actually four units that come with dividers that you can connect and stack together. I did add some pieces of styrofoam to the back of some of the compartments for the shorter supplies to push them forward. And I did glue the dividers in place so they wouldn't flop around. Zero regrets with this unit. This whole right side holds a complete set of Copic sketch markers. Again, I have a problem. I bought a couple and the next thing I know they're multiplying like gremlins. I like to blame my cousin who introduced me to the damn things, but I think at the end of the day, I kind of have to admit I have a problem. On the left side of the unit, starting at the bottom, going right to left, we have a set of Prismacolor colored pencils, along with a few randos thrown in, which I got from a past art sub box. I haven't really played around with the Prismacolors too much, but I do plan to dive into them very soon for a test drive. Next, we have some Tombow ABT Pro markers. I had gotten a few of them from an art box and hated them. <laughs> to be fair, though, I would like to give them another go on better paper to see if the paper was the problem or if it's just the markers, and I'm not a fan. Then we have a set of Faber-Castell Polychromos colored pencils, and like the Prismacolors, I haven't used these a ton, but I do have plans to use them coming up very soon. Just to the left, we have some random watercolor pencils. Also hiding in here are a pastel pencil and a charcoal pencil that didn't have a home. Then we have a 12-piece set of Spectrum Noir Illustrator markers. While I haven't used them a ton, I will say I'm not a huge fan of the barrel shape. I find them to be kind of awkward and uncomfortable to work with compared to the Copics. In the next three cubbies, there are Karen Brush Marker Pro markers. These are great for calligraphy, graphic design, illustration. I have a standard set of these, but I also have a metallic set tucked away in here too. Next, we have a cubby full of extra multi-liners. The ones that I use regularly are on my desk. These are either extras or ones I don't use often. There are a lot of Copic multi-liners along with some Micron, Faber-Castell, and Tombos. In the last two cubbies, we have a 29-piece set of Posca pens that I grabbed off Amazon, along with two smaller white Posca pens that I picked up separately, and there are two Faber-Castell pit pens that came out of an art sub box. Hiding in the corner is a cutting board. Then, on top of the marker and pencil storage unit, I have this pencil holder made to look like a sharpener, and I freaking love this thing so much, I felt the need to get two. The other one's on my desk. In this one, there's a mix of supplies. Sharpies, markers, pencils, a couple paint brushes. It's a bit random. Then this teal glass full of shorter brushes. Most of them are watercolor brushes. Some are made for a variety of mediums. And then there are brushes for painting small details. In the middle, I have an antique clock from 1908 that I found at a flea market market years ago when I was buying and selling antiques. I loved it so much, I just couldn't part with it. Then in this tall black and gold container, I have my longer brushes that are mainly for oil paint or acrylic. On top of this smaller white container, I have a paintbrush that I use to gesso wood panels. And inside the container, I have just a random mix of connectors. Nothing too exciting in here. As for the other things, we have a picture of my grandparents on my mom's side, a clay cow that goes back to my high school days. Long story short, we had cows at our high school. Then there's a drawing of my grandfather, the same one who's in the photo, that was done long before I was born. And then an empty frame, I planned to put a photo of my other grandparents in from my dad's side. Now let's jump up to the three shelves. This bottom shelf is a mix of books, surfaces to work on, a clay pasta machine, and a couple of family heirlooms. First up is a small wooden box of antique Rembrandt pastels that belonged to my great-grandfather, Dennis. He was a commercial artist out of Boston. I'm thinking he'd probably be pretty pissed <laughs> to see my barely used sets of brand new Rembrandt pastels. Then we have his antique set of drafting or drawing tools. Although they're in rough shape, they are so much more impressive looking than my set. Behind the heirlooms is a clay pasta machine that's currently in pieces. Then we have a bunch of different surfaces to work on. Small watercolor and sketchbooks, marker paper, black watercolor paper, a couple sketchbooks, a couple line notebooks, 
white watercolor paper, more black watercolor paper, illustration paper, more marker paper, <laughs> tracing paper, a sketch pad, Bristol paper, pastel paper, two more watercolor, and some sketchbooks in white, tan, and gray toned. I also have some books on a couple of my favorite artists. First up is Escher. I have loved his work since I was about four. The detail in his work is insane, and I love his imagination and illusions. Then Dolly I became obsessed with in high school for the same reasons that I love Escher, but Dolly has more of a dreamlike feel to his work. There's also a book by my friend Mike Stevens, who is an excellent comic and horror artist. I'll leave his info below if you want to check out his work. Then at the very end, there's more pastel paper and a sketchbook from high school. The top two shelves are just storage for more surfaces to paint on. On the middle shelf are some canvas boards in white and black. Then we have some wood panels. On top of those are some small stretch canvas. Then the top shelf has larger stretch canvas. Now for our final stop, let's jump over to my desk. The largest thing on my desk would be the structure I built out of wood, some L brackets, clamps, and white paint to hold my overhead camera. For the overhead view, I have an A6600 Sony with a flip-up LCD screen. That is attached to a ring light that wraps around the lens of my camera, which is secured to the wood structure. It's been a great little setup for overhead views and lighting. On the left side of my desk, I have another camera, a A6400 Sony with a flip-up LCD. I have that attached to my desk on a metal arm that I bought on Amazon. Behind the camera, I have an iPad Pro. I like to play around and procreate, but I am the first to admit that I am horrible <laughs> at digital art. Then there is a sketchbook, a notebook, a wooden bowl full of washi tape, and an antique cup full of multi-liners and a couple pencils. On the right side, I have a little speaker. I love listening to music while I work. Then there's a sharpener, a small bowl with erasers, the other pencil holder that looks like a sharpener, in it are a pair of scissors, a ruler, a makeup brush, pencils, markers, mechanical pencils, and lead refills. Behind all that is a little reminder of home, a lilac candle. It is my favorite flower and it makes me think of spring in New England. In the center of my desk are some coloring books that were designed by one of my closest friends, Dustin Perry. I'll be tackling one of these in a video very soon, finally putting those colored pencils to use. Dustin has several coloring books covering all things spooky, a couple on mental health, and one on sharks. If you'd like to check him out, I'll leave a link below so you can have a look. The very last thing in all of this mess is a tabletop easel that I keep beside my desk. It is very special to me because my grandfather, the one you saw in the photo earlier, built it for me. So that is where we're at. Everything in my art room. With the exception of some things that may have shown up in the mail while I was filming this video. <laughs> As I admitted earlier, I have a problem. Please, please say I'm not the only one. I hope you guys enjoyed this little peek into my world and I am so excited to start this weird creative journey with you. If you have any questions, comments, or even suggestions on projects you'd like to see me tackle, please leave them in the comments below. Also, be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. Until next time, thank you all so much for watching and a huge thank you to my patrons for all their support.